Good everyone, bonjour tout le monde. This is Roger, and welcome to this new episode of Brothers in Arms. Aujourd'hui, nous sommes à Artena avec Monsieur Gianni Blassi, qui est un expert historien de l'histoire du First Special Service Force. Monsieur Blassi va nous raconter l'histoire de l'avance sur Rome et la libération de Rome par le First Special Service Force au matin du 4 juin 1944. At the breakout, the force was on the beachhead. Their main objective was to cross the Appian Way and the railway, the railroad. Then they had to go up Mount Arestino. They were not taking the road because they were afraid of everything being mined, and everything was mined. The veterans have told me that they had never seen more chaos than that. At one point, they found themselves in front of the armor. So the tanks were behind and they were in front. And it was really difficult to know where you were going and what was happening. As they finally came out, they went up Mount Aristino. From Mount Aristino, they went to Cori. Cori, Rocca Massima, and this is mountain, 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 mountain. And they came over to the top of this mountain. So Highway 6 comes from the Lady Valley. It comes up and goes through Artena, between Artena and that grey building that you see over there, that's the town of Valmontone. And the Germans had made their stand there. They had dispersed their Tiger tanks, brought in all kinds of stuff, Nebelwefers and the like, and they were hitting the town very seriously. The force did go down into the valley. From this headquarters, they had a perfect view of what was happening. Forget all the houses that you see here now. There was nothing here. Nothing except agricultural land. So this is the attempt to cut them off. But the Germans are making a very efficient stand. So at that point, the force was taken back to a place called Colleferro and they were practically at a bivouac again my informer <laughs> told me I don't know where the hell they got those bottles <laughs> but they had a way of finding wine and they were about to get at it again when Ed got orders that they were going to go into Rome. So, round them all up again, put them onto the trucks, and they took Highway 6 into Rome. They stopped at Tor Pazienza, which is a suburb out of Rome, and then went in in three different directions. Of course, Mark Radcliffe with the house force went in first to probe it out a bit and see what was going on. As they, they go in, there were rear guard operations by the uh, Germans. Uh, when you went into the city, they had left a few tanks. Uh, there were snipers left and right. And a few of the forcemen told me that they had to take turns at spearheading. And every time they had to turn, they had to turn around a corner. The guy in the lead was thinking, is this the last corner I take? It's not as easy as some people make it sound. It's almost as if they walked in, mm. having a good time. They had a good time after, yeah. but not going into Rome. When they finally did get the job done in Rome, Frederick was wounded and he was taken to the American Embassy, on the w perimeter wall of the Embassy there is that plaque dedicated to Robert Tryon Frederick. Now at that point we are on the 4th of June. D-Day in Normandy is the 6th mm -hmm. and that's when the Italian campaign took a back seat.
As we were going to the podium, I said to General Thomas, Sir, please make your phrases short. Don't worry. You'll see how short my phrases will be. We got to the podium. And this is exactly what he said. That was the highest lesson in oratory I have ever had in my life. Good evening, good evening, dignitaries, blah, 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 blah. Everybody is running to see a particular film these days, period. I haven't seen it, and I probably won't see it. I saw it well quite a few years ago, and I don't think that I need to see it again. This morning, I went to visit two schools, and I saw some faces of kids of elementary school. I saw faces of elementary school kids when I came here the first time, too. But I didn't like those faces. I would like to keep the faces of children like the ones I saw this morning. Thank you. That is the speech <laughs> Of a, a, a brigadier general? Yes. He had filtered everything that had happened through the years, and the faces of the kids that he found here then were totally different. They were starving, that's the truth, and they had lice, and they had the whole works. Were totally different from the ones he was seeing now. Mm. So every time I think of a speech, Ed's voice rings in my ear, and I say to myself, that's the way it should be done. And after considering what Ed did during the war, and what the forestmen did during the war, what the Canadians did during the war in the Leedy Valley, saving kids left and right, I have come to the realization that there has to be a different way. We've been solving and not solving problems through warfare for the last five, six, seven thousand years. And it doesn't solve the problem. We've done research on cancer and we're getting places. We've done research on surgery and we're getting places. Yet, for some stupid reason, men always go back to the old solution which doesn't solve problems and creates new problems, there has to be a different way to keep the faces of those kids the way they are here now, not the way they are in Syria now. So that was the highest lecture I ever got. And I didn't get it from an expert in Shakespeare. I got it from a man of the first special service force. Je tiens à remercier M. Gianni Blassi pour avoir accepté de nous rencontrer à Artena et nous avoir accordé cette merveilleuse entrevue. L'histoire du général Thomas m'a particulièrement touché parce qu'elle m'a rappelé les visages des enfants que j'ai moi-même croisés durant mes déploiements. Et nous, je pense que nous sommes tous d'accord avec lui qu'il doit y avoir une meilleure façon de régler nos conflits. Thank you for watching and for having been with us since the beginning of this video series. This episode was the last episode relating the battles in which the first specials of his force participated in Italy. In the last two episodes of this video series, we will take you in a special visit in the Historicus Museum owned by Mr. Angelo Andreoli, who was our guide on Monte la Defensa. In the last episode, we will visit the Winterline Museum in Ven Afro, directed by Mr. Luciano Bucci, who was our guide at, at the Hill 720, Radicosa, and Monte Mayo. So once again, thanks for watching. For Brothers in Arms, this is Roger. Till we meet again, fair winds and soft landings, everyone. Airborne!